Hey, hey, hey! Welcome, welcome to the Friday Eleven Eleven Show with me, Trina, your intuitive advisor from TheMoonTree.org, helping you navigate life's energies. All right, so today we are going to talk about tarot or tarot or however you say that. Let me just set up here. Okay, so. Most spiritual advisors and people like card readers and stuff do start out with tarot because it is a system. And once you learn that system, it infiltrates into other ways like astrology and then Lenormand cards. Okay. So when I do my readings, for example, I like to use this kind of pyramid structure where I've got Oracle cards on top for the over energy, the, the, the big energy. And then tarot is in the middle, right? The events, the feelings, the actions, right? And then on the bottom of the pyramid, I like to have about five Lenormand cards um, for very specific predictions and events. But we're not talking so much about Oracle cards or Lenormand, we're talking about tarot cards today. And some tips when you are, maybe if you're a beginner, intermediate or expert, you'll find some value in this little show. Okay. So first of all, picking your first tarot deck, that's kind of one of the more important things, right? When, especially when you're a beginner. So I always recommend getting something that is either the Rider weight deck itself, the original or something very similar to it. So today for this show, I'm going to use my friend tarot oracles deck the watercolor tarot. It's really cool shuffling and spreading the cards out with this deck. I just love it. But you know, he's a painter and so his images are watercolor, but they are very similar to the Rider Waite original. Because if you start buying these abstract decks when you're a beginner, you're likely to lose some of the system that, you know, the the because it is a process. Tarot is a system. So I would suggest something rider weight or similar to the wider weight original deck. Why? Because it has all the right characters, the actions that they're doing, the symbology is very important, even the color. And when you spread your cards out in a spread, you can watch it like a movie. Okay. And that's one of the first tips I would say when you're reading Tarot especially if you don't know how to read tarot yet or you don't know the meanings you don't necessarily have to know any of the book any of the meanings when you first start what you want to look at is the imagery it looks like a movie so here's an example i'll show you um, a three card spread here okay so here we have a three card spread we've got a lot of people in this spread I see okay I just pulled this before I went live and we see here a lot of people okay what and it's funny because when you're first starting with tarot the people cards the kings the queens the knights the pages which we have here except for there's no queen here but the people cards the court cards we call them are always the hardest sort of thing to to get here so what we look at is first of all Let's look at it kind of like a movie or like a comic book. What's happening here? Well, do you notice the first thing is they're all looking in one direction. They're all looking towards the left, going somewhere, going in one direction, which shows me that I pulled this sort of randomly before our live video talking about Tarot. So people are involved, of course, you guys and me, and we're all going in the same direction about learning maybe something about tarot now if we look at the leader of this lineup we see the king which is the highest of the court cards he's the boss he's he's um you know he's the leader behind him is the knight of wands the second kind of leader and so you've got your page of cups in the very back at the end of the line he's the pages are always the beginners the learners they're just starting out on the scene so here we could say this tarot show would be very good for experts intermediate and beginners there'll be a little something for everyone 
okay. And then we start to look at the more intricate um, things. So what we could see is people, there's all people. So we know that people are involved. Okay. Next, we could look at colors. Okay, I see a lot of yellow, which is sunshiny and sort of solar plexus chakra related bravery, confidence, the confidence to do something. But I also see on the page of cups that blue, that light blue. Now, the light blue is that throat chakra. In fact, I want to show you the shirt I'm wearing is the light blue, which is communication. It's throat chakra. So I think that when you're learning to row, it's a good idea to learn at least the seven chakras a little bit about them. You know, the red root chakra means safety and security. The yellow in your, in your belly, the yellow solar plexus means confidence and bravery. And then you get up into the purple and the dark blue and that. That's all your intuition and that. Okay. Just as an example, but I think it's a good idea to learn about the chakras because as we can see here, it's like taking this yellow action confidence, right? So color is important in Tarot. Then we, and then we see communication with the Page of Cups with all that blue and light blue, right? Okay, so that's kind of the chakra color thing. So we look at colors, we look at what's going on, the feel, the vibe of the movie, right? Think of it as like a movie or a comic book. Next, what could we look at? Well, I like to look at the suits. Now, there are four suits, just like when you're playing like, you know, clubs, diamond with regular playing cards. Well, there's four suits in Tarot, you know, if you're a beginner. Um, wands are, which we got a lot of wands in this spread. I'll show you that it's spread again in a minute, but wands, action, taking charge, doing something. Okay. Wands. Then the cups, cause we got a cups card here, right? At the end, the page of cups, what's cups and those there's water in the back. Water is the element of emotion and intuition. And cups are that emotion and our feelings. So it's it's intuition, feelings, sort of a more lovely feminine receiving compared to that action of the wands, which was go, 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 yang, masculine, right? So, so the second part of Tarot is you want to learn about those four suits. So we talked about wands, we talked about cups, and then there's also earth, which is kind of... Um, the practical day to day. It's also about money and feeling resources, secure through resources. That's earth. And then finally we have, um, what was the other one? Swords, which we didn't get a sword in our spread here, but if you did get a sword, that would be about thinking stuff in the mind, stuff in communication as well, but a lot about the mind mental processes. So that, so chakras, learn a little bit about that basic and you know if you get our deck the power of eight chakra oracle in the lid now these are tarot cards but because i'm a tar tarot person i put tarot feelings into this deck as well in the way of the chakra part the colors so it would say you know um what did we see we saw the throat light blue right communication and we saw um yellow in the stomach solar plexus which is right there solar plexus and that was personal power confidence self-esteem so you could even just use if you have the power of eight oracle cards you can use that as a cheat sheet to the colors in the tarot for example or just print something off of google whatever <laughs> but you know so check the colors the four suits of tarot if you only knew that in very basic you're already going to be able to do a super good reading right like we just did here we can see that there's power and confidence in our communication through this little learning show we can see that there's lots of people involved and we can see that it's a show good for both experts the king who's the leader an intermediate, the Knight of Wands, and also beginners, like the Page of Cups. 
Okay, so there is already a little bit of a basic reading. And we saw that there was two wands cards, which is action, taking action. You have to do something, right? And it's exciting, right? Tarot can be very exciting. And we saw the cups, which means, yes, we want to put a little intuition into that. And we're learning about Tarot and we're the page of cups. We're just starting and it's feeling, it's good, you know? So, so there you go. There's a little um, progression here. You start off as the page of cups, just learning. Then you become braver with the knight. And finally, eventually with all your learnings, you can become that king of wands in Tarot. The king of action, the king, you know, that kind of feeling. So there's a quick little Tarot thing and following a little bit of the system of Tarot. Now, the next thing is you could mix it which is what I do all the time, that pyramid thing I was telling you about. So I always start off, let's do a reading, a little pyramid. We'll say, what's the top energy, the top of the pyramid, which is an oracle card. I'm using our deck, the power of eight. But you use any oracle deck that you love to have, right? And the numbers will mean something, right? So at the top of the energy here, it's I am worthy of love. So this is heart chakra related. Four is the number of security. And that's the third thing I want to talk about in Tarot is the numbers. Numbers in Tarot mean so much. Number, the universe talks to us in numbers. So here we get the number four, feeling more secure. So let's start from one to ten. Thinking of it as a movie, I love to imagine the tarot cards and all of it is a movie unfolding. And the numbers would be like, the one is the beginning of the movie, 10 is the end. Middle is the five where all the stuff happens. It's the climax of the movie. Can be some problems to overcome, some challenges to overcome that five. So let's start. Number one, new begin. If you get a one in tarot, aces, it's a new something something. So if you just talked about the elements, so let's say you got an ace of wands, something new, action oriented, and could be about work. Something is happening for you there. Okay. Then we get to the two, two people, partnerships. Also duality, yay or nay, could be a choice. Do I do this? Do I do that? Two. Also very much about partnership, people, energy as well. Connection. Then we get to the three. Three is like merging with other, two other people, right? When you look at your row, let's see if I can find a three here. A three of something, something. Um, oh, by the way, the... I should have showed you. Okay. We talked about one new beginning here would be swords because we talked about the elements just reverse or rewind this video later, but swords are about communication and stuff in the mind. So a new idea, maybe ace of swords, a new something with your brain, right? A new, lots of times it's like this new aha moment. So that's the an ace, a new beginning, a new something. And then because it's the swords, it's in your head. Right? So this is why it's important to learn numbers and those four elements. Swords, wands, pentacles or coins, you could call them, which is the earth. And um, the cups, which are the water, emotional elements. So those four suits in tarot, learn those, what they mean, general. And then the numbers. So we're talking about numbers now. One, ace, new beginning. Two, um... Let's look at the two. Do I have a two anywhere here? Let's find a two. Aha, two of swords. There, look, another swords. Thinking again. A choice. There's, what's this person doing? I don't know if I should do this or this. And my eyes are blindfolded, so maybe I'm not seeing all the picture. And maybe I need some more information before I actually make that choice. Two, choice. 
Two is also about partnerships. You'll see like the two of cups, which shows two people loving each other or partnership kind of thing. So there's the two. Okay, now let's look at the three. I think that numbers are probably one of the most important things in Tarot to learn, especially now that we're going through these numbers. See another two, for example, we're on the two, two of coins or two of pentacles. He's juggling. He's juggling two things. Maybe it could be two money things, or maybe it's two jobs because, you know, money and coins, resources. He's juggling, trying to find a way. So two, right? Two things. All right. Now we go to, let's see if we can find a three. Because numbers, like I said, super important. And so when you're dealing with the bigger cards, the major arcana, you would want to reduce the number. Like, let's say you got to the end, the world card, which is the end of the major arcana. And it, before we get into all these little numbers, but let's say you got 21, the world, the end of the major arcana, two plus one equals three, creating something, right? So we're going to talk about the three here. What is the three? Well, three things, but it's usually in some kind of merging with, it's almost like you and two other people quite often. So for example, the three of cups, three people celebrating, cheering their cups, having a happy time, three okay what else um here's the three of wands maybe you know he's got two ideas for work to bring in money in, and he's looking over the shore about this third one is it going to be viable so three is is a lot about this how can i grow and how can i grow in myself and create right and merge with other people or opportunities three right and then we look at the four which is always about stability and security and the way i think about the four is like four legs holding up a table so here we got the four of pentacles dude's got money he's sitting on his money he's not sure if he's gonna overspend or oversave. It, it, you have to look at the cards around it but there's this feeling of security perhaps this guy is being a little over secure maybe Okay, if it was upside down, maybe he's letting all his money fall out and all his security is falling away, could be, as an example. That's very, very superficial. But you know, you have to look at the cards, but four is always about this secure sort of um, feeling. Look at this, four wands at the, the celebration. It could be a wedding, uh, but there's this feeling of, of structure four corners, four things, right? And it, it's like a square holding up. It's that stability structure foundation sort of stuff where you're feeling pretty good and secure or not, but then you get to that five, which is the, ah, a bunch of stuff's happening, right? And there's always some kind of crazy action with the five, just like in a middle of the year movie where the chaos happens, the climax, all the crazy, exciting stuff, the challenges to be overcome. So the five of wands, you know, these guys are all, are they fighting with each other or are they fighting for a common goal? We're not sure. We'd have to look at the cards surrounding it. But do you see there is this sense of chaos in a way, right? Five, something you got to deal with. Let's see, do I have any more fives I could show you? Okay, five of cups. This guy, what's, what's happening? There's five cups, some of, he's pouring one out. It's a little chaotic for him. Maybe he's uh, realizing, oh boy, I'm an alcoholic and I need to get help. And I'm going to uh, dump all this alcohol out and get a better life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I like reading things as a movie too, but, but there you go. Five is always something sort of troublesome to deal with. Just like in the movies. Then we get to the six and it starts to sort of brighten up. It starts to feel better because you've just gone over that five, so to speak, in the movie. You're now like, wow, I just did a thing. It was tough, but I'm healing now, right? The six, it's a lot about this healing, more happier feeling. Oh, by the way, I just go back to the five for a second about how it's like bad. <laughs> I wouldn't say bad, but challenging, like the five of pentacles. Five of coins, same thing. You could say pentacles or coins. But like this person's out in the cold and um, 
also maybe this person is helping this person know and maybe it was a little kid that didn't want to go home because her dad said you don't come home until you sell all those matches and she didn't sell all her matches and now she doesn't want to go home but it's so freezing out so this nice lady comes and helps her and realizing that you're not alone there is help there's challenges with the five but there's always some kind of solution so when we get to the six and maybe we found our solution right like the lovers card in major arcana is actually the number six and that's like making a choice and maybe finding uh joy through help from other people for example you know the six is this healing vibe that you can have after the trials and tribulations of the five so six do i have any more i want to see if i have a six here six of wands aha i did a good thing i am riding my horse to all the people and the people love and adore me now rewards accolades maybe you've done some hard work after the five and now you're at the six six of wands for example is you're being rewarded and ad admired or acknowledged for something good that you did and helpful that you did and, and getting over some kind of challenge of the five right that's the six in fact the six in chinese metaphysics which i practice like the botsy the chaman and all that six is a number of healing too so uh he you know the six is always a nice card to get the six of cups here you go i'll give you a nice present i'll give you a nice flower there i'm giving it to you from my heart and um you know, you're a special child. I love you. And there's the house in the background. You know, maybe these are memories of nostalgic past. But the six is always this nice sort of healing phase after you've gone through, you know, that five. And then we get to the seven. The seven is a lot about patience and a new awareness. And, you know, the sevens sometimes is kind of a thinking in the way that you might have to do something with the way kind of like law of attraction stuff like you might have to, when you get a seven it's this new awareness in, in spirituality that you're trying to sort of attune to like the seven of cups um it's like there's this choice here what choice are you going to make and maybe the choice is bad maybe the choice is good but it's good to weigh your options the pros and cons with that seven new awareness right being aware of um things and and so the seven of pentacles or the seven of coins is like you've planted a bunch but now you're waiting patiently for your harvest to happen right it's not quite time yet to harvest right it's you got to wait a little longer and so it's this learning of a new awareness a new belief system a lesson having to do with your mind so for example this guy's learning patience this guy's learning how to weigh the options properly before making a rash decision okay for example it's very much about this new awareness sort of learning thing of the mind now let's look at the eight for me eights and tarot are a lot about being empowered in some way that's why we called these the power of eight not only because we were working with eight chakras but also because there is a magic to the eight it's an empowering number it's also very karmic when you put the eight to its side you get the infinity you get that infinity symbol too it's 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 like everything's connected everything is a cycle and um it's about being empowered too in some way so let's take a look at some tarot cards with the eight the eight of cups i'm leaving behind these cups and going to the horizon i'm going somewhere better um i'm leaving behind something maybe that doesn't serve me anymore or maybe it's just this change and i have to be brave to make this change i'm leaving behind my comfort zone in some cases so the eight is this number of empowerment to do something that may not feel super comfortable at times depending on what suit you get so this is the cups it's very feeling this could be like he or she 
are going through a breakup and need to walk away, but it's hard to walk away from what's familiar and all that love that used to fill those cups as an example, right? Or it could be, I'm going off to college. I'm leaving behind my loving family and going off on my own to the horizon. And yes, it feels a little uncomfortable. It takes a little bit of empowerment, that yellow solar plexus chakra as we see here in Tarot Oracle's deck. Eight of Swords. She's all blindfolded, tied up, caught in these swords. But there's not really fenced off. She could totally walk. She's probably not that tied up. She could probably just take the blindfold off. It's being empowered in this case with the eight to sort of remove those blindfold, remove that blindfold, get yourself out of this trap that is likely just in your head. Because remember, the swords are about communication and mental processes. So she's a lot in her head right now and maybe just needs to have someone remove the blindfold or even just take a step forward and realize that there is no gate here. She's open for business. She can walk out and, uh, you know, her lesson with the eight, you know, of empowerment is to open her eyes maybe to new solutions or new opportunities that she's missing because she's too caught up in maybe some negative thinking or pity party or that kind of feeling, right? So so it, it, for me, the eight is, is, is an empowering number in some way, learning about being empowered in some way. Let me see if I can find any more eight, um, eights here. Eight, eight, eight. Well, can't seem to find any more eights at this time. But. Oh, here we go. Here's an eight. Eight of pentacles. Um, eight of pentacles or eight of coins. He's being empowered to work hard and diligently on his new creations. And then he's going to be empowered to sell those creations, for example, and sort of reach the 10, which was, we love the 10s in most cases, unless it's, in a lot of cases, we do like the 10 in tarot, meaning that it's an ending, a completion. It's in the happy suits are the 10 of cups or the 10 of pentacles. So he's wanting to get to the 10 of pentacles, which is rich and family life is great and my work life is great and everything's so super hunky dory he's working towards the 10 right he's at the eight right now so he's really being empowered to create something to sell for example or to get really involved in his work in his in in in, in sort of uh his craft and and being empowered for that as an example for the eight right okay and then we get to the nines which is getting close to the 10 and in some cases it can be good in some cases it can be bad too for example remember when we talked about the swords well swords are about thinking and swords are about communication so when you have too many swords like in this card the nine you have nine swords that's a little too much sword activity okay it's keeping her up at night she's feeling anxious she's having maybe some bad dreams she's worried look she's not cool she's, she's just not having fun here so if it was upside down you could possibly read in reverse saying that well maybe you did feel this way but now it's coming better like the swords are falling away from you now and they're not on top of you so that's cool you know maybe you've reached a point we're kind of hoping this card would be reversed because it kind of means that you're coming out of that anxiety, overthinking, over sword activity, right? But in some cases, the nine can be really good. Like, let me try and find a good nine. Because also the nine of wands isn't that great. And see, it's because all these pointy sticks, right? The pointy sticks always seem to hurt you if you have too many of them. <laughs> so we've got the rods or the wands and then we got the swords and nine of them is just too many and it causes some kind of trouble. This guy's feeling, I don't know, sort of defensive. He doesn't look like he's super happy. His face doesn't look great. 
and she certainly doesn't look great. So too many sticks isn't great, so to speak. But if we could find another nine that is much better, because I know the nine of cups and the nine of pentacles or nine of coins are the good ones. Good nines, we'll say. So let me just try and find one of them. Nine, I'm looking for the nine. I want to find a good nine. Nine, nine, nine. Where are you? How come I can't find any nines? There we go. This one. So pretty. Nine. So you can have some good nines. So nine sticks, whether it's swords or wands, not good. Too many sticks. But nine money, nine pentacles, nine coins. Okay, liking it, feeling good, loving the outdoors, feeling pretty good, right? Now, I know the nine of cups is pretty good too. I just can't find it right now. But you get what I mean? So there you go. The nine is like you're almost there, but you're not quite at the 10. You're not quite at the end of your cycle. You're almost there though. Could be a little more work to do. Or it could just be a case of, you know, the nine is a lot about enjoying what you have already, or at least being cognizant and observant of what's going on immediate environment, I find with the nines too. Um, but a lot of times you're still seeking something a little bit. You're just not quite at the 10 yet. Still seeking something a little bit with the nine. Now we get to the 10, which again can be good or bad. 10 sticks, whether it's wands or swords, not good. Too much, too much, right? But you get those, you know, 10 of uh, ten of cups. Oh gosh, look at all those cups. They're filled with love. 10 cups filled with love. Yes, please. And look at the family life, the love. Everything's great. Your emotional life is doing good. You get to the 10. So you see how numbers... And the suits, those four suits, really can tell you everything without even, as long as you have a base knowledge of the numbers and at least you know what the elements mean. Cups mean love and emotion. Wands mean some kind of fiery action. Pentacles or coins, you can call them, mean resources, can mean real money. That security feeling of having stuff, as well as, you know, what am I missing? The swords, which are the thinking ones. And a lot of times we're like, oh, I don't want to get swords because there's not like a whole lot of good swords. But without the lessons of the swords, we would never evolve and we would never even know the difference between what's good or bad in life. And we need to evolve as human beings. That's important. So we need those swords. We need some kind of action in the movie. Otherwise, the movie would be boring. Like if you had no action of the swords in a movie or even the wands. Like if you had no action, what kind of movie is that? Not cool. So we need that stuff too. So I hope this helps into your new adventure in Tarot. And I hope that helped you, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or expert, like we talked about at the beginning of this live show. All right, everybody. So thank you for watching. Oh, I do have some card, please, or is tip on reading cards. Okay, yes. And if you're still here, Rebecca, I will give you a quick tarot card. But I'm going to give you, instead of using the tarot oracle, which was great, I want to use one of the decks that aren't so Rider Waite-ish, the Lightseer's Tarot. And I like using these for my clients because they have beautiful colors. They've got sort of this nice, nice vibe to them, kind of a hippy dippy vibe that I like, right? In fact, I'm doing readings at the Bodhi Tree tomorrow at the grand opening. And this shirt, light blue throat chakra for communication, but it is from her. 
from the store, from Bodhi Tree store. And it's kind of a really cute. It's got butterflies on it and yoga stuff and stuff. But anyways, clothes will be sold at the Bodhi Tree tomorrow as well. Discounts on everything. Okay, Rebecca, let's see for you what kind of stuff. Oh, the Two of Swords, which we talked about in the little lesson. Two of Swords we talked about. So you too could be uh, not seeing... Because the two we talked about, which is either two people or two choices or two things, like this duality, maybe you're not seeing the solution because maybe you're, you know, blindfolded and it's just important to sort of remove that, let the crows take off the blindfold for you so that maybe you could see um, a new solution. Swords are all about the mind too. So in communication, so new ideas could potentially come to you, solutions to your problem if you remove the blindfold because perhaps you're um, not seeing some new solutions per, per se, right? Amber card for me, yes, and I'll give you the same as I did for Rebecca, the Light Seers to roll. One of my favorites. Okay, so Amber Dawn, there we go. Ooh, that popped out. The Knight of Pentacles or the Knight of Coins, meaning that what's he, okay, so let's just look at the picture for a second. What's this person doing? Well, this person's taking his little horse. He's going somewhere. He's got some um, things. Maybe, maybe this is a new opportunity to sell something or to make more money in some way too. Um, this new adventure per se, this new, like, it looks like there's an adventure happening here soon. He's going to, he's walking for a little bit, kind of thinking things through, and then he's going to get on that horse and go do something. Maybe it's about selling those pentacles, right? Maybe it's about selling, he made those and he's going to go sell them, for example. So, you know, in the reading, I would say to you, ah, you're going on some kind of new adventure adventure with money maybe money's coming towards you it looks like there's something um new happening for you with the night where you're it could be about learning how to manage your money better right the night takes a little bit of action with the horse kind of thing and it's kind of an intermediate level so you know it could be either Taking a new promotion at a job or up leveling in your job or something to make more money. Or maybe it's about managing your finances. Maybe it's about taking the action to create a budget and see where your money's going, where you could save, where you could make more. It just it's to me, the pentacles and coins are all about your resources, your money, your stuff. And so there's something new happening there where you're going to sort of take charge and go on this kind of new adventure concerning finances and things like that that make you feel secure. So that's very cool too. Sometimes it could be literal. Maybe you have something to do with horses and there is some kind of new lucrative opportunity with the horse or something like that. You know, if I was reading for one of my friends who I know has horses, I would easily say, oh, wow, you and your horse, you know, something cool with money there. Maybe you're going to make some money off the horse or what's going on there, you know, and then talk that through. For example, so there, there's there's a little lesson there in, in to roll that way. Look at the pictures. Look at what's happening. Put yourself inside the card and that will help you become a better reader and make it more fun too. It's boring and not as fun when you go like, oh, what does this mean? I'm going to look at the book. And then your feelings not in it. Like, don't even look at the book for the first while that you're learning to roll and just look at the pictures and get the feelings, move inside the card. And as long as you know those four elements and the numbers, you probably don't even really need the book until later when you want to increase your skills. Okay, so there you go. Thanks for joining me. Love you all. And I'll see you in our next 1111 show next week. And this is 1111 AM Mountain Time. Okay, so that would be 1.11 in the afternoon, Eastern time. And uh, each week we talk about something new. So I hope this helps. Love you all. Visit me at www.themoontree.org. Just check out the little right there. <laughs> and uh, I have readings and tools and the cards also available as an app uh, to help you in your spiritual journey. All right. Talk to you next time.